Well, God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Logan here at the Messiah Baptist Church, right here at 210 Congress Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We're so honored to have you share with us today, and so we welcome you. But not only that, we want to begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this second Sunday in December. You brought us all the way from January of this year. It's been a strange year, but Lord, we're thankful that we're still here by your grace and your mercy. And Lord, in the midst of all things, we're going to continue to celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ was born. Jesus Christ came into the world to save us from our sin. And so Lord, as we go forth in our worship, we pray that someone is strengthened. We pray that someone is encouraged. We pray that someone gets to know you in a special way. Lord, we thank you again, whether it's through the ministry of music, whether it's through the prayers, whether it is through the preaching of the word of God. Be glorified in all things. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh 
again, brothers and sisters, we welcome you again, all of our disciples of Messiah, as well as our virtual community. We thank you, family, extended family, for sharing with us, and we pray that you have been blessed already. Amen. And listen, you have an opportunity to continue to share with us virtually, and eventually at some point, hopefully soon, several months though, but eventually we'll be able to come back together in some way physically. But in the meantime, we're going to continue to stay knit in the spirit and share with each other. Just a couple of observations we want to share with you, and that is, this is, yes, this is the Advent season. Uh, we pray that you all are being safe. We're thankful for being able to come together this way, and so we want you to continue to maintain those restrictions as set forth according to the CDC. Let us remember each other in prayer, those that are sick, those that are going through bereavement. Uh, again, remember uh, the Samuel family in their hour of grief and loss. And also we want to thank those of you who gave towards our virtual angel tree for our women's ministry. We, bet we really appreciate all that you're doing, all that you've done, and we continue to give and to support the community as well. chapter 12, verses 20 through 25. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 20 through 25. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, and it reads as follows. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable 
are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have been less, that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. And I want to read that 25th verse that says, this makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. Brothers and sisters, for a few minutes, uh, I want to share from the topic, the diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. The diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. Won't you join me for a word of prayer? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me, even as I share now with these thy people. I pray, O oh God, that you stand with me as you always do. And use me to bring words of encouragement, words of salvation, words of, of hope, words of peace. It's for your glory. And we thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. Thank you for making it clear so that all of us can understand and apply it to our lives. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. The diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. 2020 is definitely not the year either of us expected or even imagined. So many pre-COVID expectations and practices are changed, put on hold, or will no longer be the same. Dining out is limited and designed really to be more of a takeout transaction. Tourism is practically non-existent. Theaters on Broadway are empty. More movies are watched on Netflix than in the movie theaters. Most churches are having virtual worship services instead of gathering in sanctuaries. Pastors and preachers are delivering sermons that are different than what has been shared in the past. That also goes for this message that the Lord placed upon my heart. I have a specific burden for the body of Christ. Therefore, this non-traditional Advent message of hope is targeted for all believers in the body of Christ and various congregations. Have you have you ever met a person that is good looking, but doesn't have any good sense? Have you ever met a person that has a lot of knowledge, but doesn't know how to use it? Have you met or heard of financially wealthy people that don't know what to do with themselves or their money? Have you ever heard of well-known public figures that are loners and have very few friends? Or what about a person you hear is very sick and you say, they didn't look sick at all? Well, this mixed bag of appearances can manifest itself in congregations. What are spiritual gifts? Let's answer that question. Dr. C. Peter Wagner says, a spiritual gift is a special attribute given by the Holy Spirit to every member of the body of Christ, according to God's grace, for use within the context of the body. Now, just a little background to our text. Division was a major problem in the church at Corinth. Each group followed its chosen human leader, exercised its gifts selfishly, and cared little for the health or ministry of the whole body. The Christians at Corinth had received an abundance of spiritual gifts, but they were lacking in spiritual graces, the kind of Christian character that the Holy Spirit longed to form in them. And Dr. Warren Wearsby reminds us that Christian gifts are not necessarily a mark of Christian character or spiritual maturity. These Corinthian believers were carnal yet they exercise wonderful and miraculous gifts. That's a good example. The abuses in the Corinthian church where it relates to the gift of tongues 
or speaking in other languages had to be addressed by the Apostle Paul. For example, those persons with the gift of tongues spoke in these other languages without having to take class or have studied them. This was a gift of the Spirit. However, many began using this gift to show off instead of glorifying the Lord. They exalted the gift above the giver of the gift. And even when it comes to spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, God will share his glory with no one. I'll say that again. Even when it comes down to spiritual gifts, God will share his glory with no one. So the question is, what is the diagnosis of a gifted and sick church? What is the diagnosis of a gifted and sick church? Well, number one, we belong to each other. We belong to each other. In verse 20, it reads, yes, there are many parts, but only one body. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. Brothers and sisters, we belong, as Apostle Paul assessed the church, he realized that we belong to each other because we share the same confession. It's very clear, if you look at verse 3, uh, the Apostle Paul outlines, so I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. We share the same confession. But not only do we share the same confession to support the fact that we belong to each other, we serve the same God. Paul emphasized this in the following verse in verse 4. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. The church, like the human body, has diversity within unity, and our, our, our human members all differ, yet they work together for the health of the body. In the spiritual body of the church, we possess gifts from the Holy Spirit. We partake in service to the same Lord Jesus Christ and share in the workings or operations of the same Father. If I was going to say amen, I'd put one right there. We belong to each other. But not only do we belong to each other, brothers and sisters, we also must understand that we need each other. We need each other. In verses 21 through 24, it states the following. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. We need each other. Those believers who possess spectacular gifts, look, they began to look down upon the others and thought they were more important. You know people like that that think that, you know, they walk around with their nose up in the air. Well, they began to carry themselves as such that they were above someone else with their gift. Yet here, Paul teaches that every member of the body is essential to the life, the health, and growth of the church. No, no, no Christian can say to his left, less gifted brother or sister, I don't need you. In fact, those parts of our body that seem the least important can do the most good or cause the most trouble if not functioning properly. I tell you what, if your pinky toe got stepped on bad enough or something fell on it, you would definitely know that you were in pain and that that pinky toe did have some kind of a function because you'd be limping and you would feel awkward without that little pinky toe. Now, when you don't have any pain, you're walking comfortably, you don't think about that one little pinky toe. But like I said, you let something happen to your one pinky toe. I guarantee you, you would definitely see that you need the whole foot. Every toe is needed. So, brothers and sisters, we belong to each other. 
That's what we shared at first. The diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. We belong to each other. We definitely need each other. I need you and you need me. We need each other in this body of Christ. But lastly, we affect each other. In verse 25, it says, this makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. We affect each other. There should be no, absolutely none, no division or schism in the body since we all share the same life through the Spirit. But it is not enough to simply avoid division. We must also care for each other and seek to build the church and strengthen the body of Christ. Now I know that we are not in the congregation or the sanctuary, I should say, as we have been pre-COVID. But we all still have a role to play. I know that you're probably hearing me, Messiah, most of the time presenting the gospel. And other churches are probably doing the same thing. Their pastors are primarily, which we normally do, present the gospel. But even now, more so, that we are doing all that we can in before you. But it's more than just us in front of you. There are others, there are a team of persons. We now realize even more so the value of those persons that have technical expertise in the church, those that have communication skills in the church, those that are able to do other things to help bring the gospel out. We all need each other and we all affect each other. So brothers and sisters, I need you to hear this. It's better, and I know what we've been saying all along in this message, but it's better to be a sick church than a dead church. I'll say that again. We're talking about the diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. And we've been looking at the church in Corinth and all of the mixtures that, go, that went on there. The gifted and those that were what we call carnal, operating in the flesh. But hear this, it's better to be a sick church than a dead church. Because in the book of Revelation, John described the church at Sardis as being dead. The church at Sardis appeared to be alive and appeared to be spiritually vibrant on the outside. But the truth was that it was spiritually lifeless. When a church is dead and has no spiritual life, the only thing that can be done is to perform an autopsy. That's a surgical procedure to dissect the corpse to determine the cause of death. But during this time of the year, church, and I hope you hear this loud and clear even from your home sanctuary, during this time of the year, we must remember the gifted and in the gifted and sick church, there is hope. We may not be physically together right now, but there is hope. We may not be able to have baby dedications, but there is hope. We may not be able to have wedding ceremonies like we did in the past right now, but there is hope. We may not be able to have homegoing celebrations as we did in the past and to celebrate the Lord's Supper like we did in the past for right now, but there is hope. There's hope because one day in Bethlehem, there was a child born, and our hope was born in a stable with animals and milk rags wrapped all around them. Our hope was and is in this child, the child named Jesus. This baby child grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and humankind. Our hope lived and performed miracles. Our hope was crucified one day on a tree on Calvary. Our hope was buried. Our hope on the third day was raised from the dead. And that's why we must recall the hymnologist that pinned my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ. I 
said, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My brother, my sister, let us continue to march on. My brother, my sister, let us keep on worshiping God. My brother, my sister, let us keep serving Christ in the community. My brother, my sister, let us reflect the love of Jesus Christ in all that we do. My brother, my sister, let's keep on pressing. Let's keep on praying. Let's keep on studying. Let's keep on moving. Why? Because there's hope. Don't give up. Don't give out. But if there's anything, we want to make sure that we keep giving God the glory, giving him all the praise, giving him all the honor because the Lord is worthy. I said he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy to be praised. And if I were going to say amen, I'd say right there, amen. As a matter of fact, I'd say hallelujah because I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for Jesus coming into the world because it's because of Jesus, this little baby boy that came in the world. I have hope. I believe. And I look forward to the day when we'll begin to move forward and do ministry. Do it maybe slightly different, but we'll make sure that we do it because our hope is built on Jesus Christ. Nothing else but the name of Jesus. The name that's above every name. The name that one day, one day every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God. I said thank God for the Son, Jesus. Jesus came. Jesus lived. Jesus died. But he lives again. Don't leave Jesus in an empty tomb. Don't leave him in the tomb. He is alive forevermore. We thank God for Jesus. He is our hope. Brothers and sisters, he's all that we have. He is all, despite the pandemic, Jesus is all that we have. Despite the political upheaval and the confusion, even with this presidential election, we still have hope in Jesus. Despite the racial tension all over the land, we still have hope in Jesus. Despite the racist spirit, the, the systemic racism that still exists all across this land, we still have hope in Jesus. And I really believe, church, I really believe, Messiah, I believe for every disciple, wherever, whatever church you are part of, local body, I believe that God is still on the throne. I believe that because of Christ, there is still hope. So don't give up, brothers and sisters. I know it doesn't seem right right now. It seems kind of strange, isolated, and not able to even shake a brother or sister's hand like we used to. Not able to even come around and welcome new members into the body. Into the, I know we miss all of that. We miss being able to pass the community. We miss being able to hug each other. Miss being able to say, hey, give each other a high five. We miss all of that. But, but, but there's hope. There's hope. Even despite the fact that we have our differences, let us continue to work together. And for those of you who are not functioning as you did before, or pre-COVID, because you do know, for example, as we close this message, for example, if you have, if you're an usher, you have not been walking up and down anybody's aisle with a plate or a basket. You haven't been putting on your traditional white gloves, right? Unless you just want to wear it around the house, but you haven't been doing any of that. But you still have value. You still have value. If you were called and you had a heart to serve as an usher, you still have an ability to serve. 
You may serve the body in another way, maybe of giving out food, maybe in helping of giving other areas to the other areas of the church. You still can still be found as a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't give up on who you are and what you bring to the table. And no one else should be looking down on you. For you bring value to the body of Christ. And that goes for anybody else. You bring value. For God has need of you to use you to continue to carry out the gospel. To use you to help others understand that Jesus Christ is still alive. The diagnosis of a gifted and sick church. Brothers and sisters, there's still hope. Let us hold on to that hope. God bless you. Maybe you heard this word today and God spoke to your heart. I pray that you remember that Jesus Christ is still alive. As we heard today in our text and we talked about the fact that Jesus did come to give hope. Jesus was born. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now I don't know who you are. I don't know your background. Maybe you've been going to church for years, but you never developed a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is a time for you now. Receive Christ into your life, right where you are, from your own home. Maybe you're in a car or wherever you are, you're able to receive Christ. You don't have to be in a physical building, a sanctuary necessarily to receive Christ, wherever you are, except Christ. I always talk about the ABCs that's, that's on the screen. Admit, believe, and confess. Say, Lord, I admit that I have sinned, but I do believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And right now, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. That's all it takes. Just a sincere prayer. It doesn't have to be long. As long as it's spoken from the heart, the Lord hears, he sees, he knows and he will come into your life. And your life will never be the same. And if you have made a decision to follow Christ, we want to know about it here at Messiah. So you can feel free to call the church at 203-368-2405 or send us a message. Send us a message on our Facebook page or on our website, go to our website. Send us a message, mymessiahbaptist.com and you see the information on the screen. Follow right along, follow up with that, and we will make sure we follow up with you. And if you decide, as you're led by God, to become a part of this fellowship, which we pray that you do, because you know, you don't have to be in Bridgeport to be a part of Messiah. You can be over in California. You can be over in, you can be in Kentucky. You can be in Florida if you want. You can still join us virtually. So, listen. Let us know and our deacons will follow up with you so that we all can grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is alive forevermore. Well, brothers and sisters, we get, as we get ready to close today, we want to just remind our disciples of Messiah that we're still doing ministry, so therefore let us continue to tithe and to give our offerings unto the Lord. For we do know that this is a very difficult season for everyone, but we want to keep giving glory to God. We want to keep giving and serving and making sure that the ministry is vibrant because more and more people today are living in despair. Many people are isolated. Many people are depressed, and especially during this season now uh, when we, we celebrate the birth of Christ. Most people are used, not most, but a large number of people are very depressed during this time of the year. But given that we don't have the ability to come together as we did in the past or pre-COVID uh, right now until this vaccine is pretty much uh, effective, proven effective for all people, we want to make sure that we do what we can to look out for each other and to pray for each other, support each other during this very difficult season. We are all in this together. 
So we want to remind our disciples and decide to please keep giving so we can do what we got to do. And then also for our, our friends and, and family, extended virtual family that worship with us, study with us, and share with us, we thank you for doing so. And if you have taken care of your business at your home church, which we trust that you will, and we encourage you to do so, you give that tithe to your home church first. I'll repeat it again. Give your tithe to your home church first. And if, if God moves upon your heart to give to us here Messiah financially, we receive it in the spirit of love in which it is given, and we thank you for it. And you can also, again, go to our website, mymessiahbaptist.com, as it's shared on the screen, and you'll be able to go to Givelify and make your donation. And there's also a means of mailing as well. You'll see the instructions there. Thank you. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for remembering us. And we pray God's blessings upon you as you have given out of your best towards us as we do God's work here at Messiah Baptist Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut. That being said, at this time, brothers and sisters, we're going to prepare for our closing benediction and prayer. Lord, thank you again for what we have experienced today in worship. Thank you for bringing us to this 12th month of the year 2020. So much going through our minds, our hearts right now, but we do believe in you. We do stand on Jesus Christ, our hope. Even in the midst of confusion, even in the midst of our function and sometimes our dysfunction, you still have work for the church, for the body of Christ to do. So we pray for healing. We pray that you utilize all of us, despite the fact that some people are not able to do what they used to do right now in this pandemic. Let them all know that there's still work to be done and to maybe pivot a little bit and tweak their, their gifting and their ability and to seek your face for how they can be used even more so during this time of need. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for reminding us of course, about Jesus Christ, our only main hope. And now, it's the name of Jesus Christ we pray, lifting up all of those that are sick, lifting up those that are going through bereavement, lifting up all of those that are downtrodden, those that feel as though they have nowhere to go. We lift them all up, all issues we present to you because you say, cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and thank you. Amen. And now, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each of you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for worshiping with us. Continue to keep running and pressing, going in hope. For our hope is built on Jesus the Christ. Because Jesus is still the reason for the season. And remember, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. God bless you.